Joaquin County, Faith in the Valley, San Joaquin, and the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Stockton are sponsoring this forum. My name is B. Lingenfelter. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters, and I will be the moderator this evening. A few rules for this Zoom online forum. Everyone but the speaker will be muted, and the chat function is disabled. Members of the audience are also asked to keep your videos off you are able to use speaker view to better see each candidate. A recording is being made for posting to the League's YouTube channel. The format is that the candidates will have one and a half minutes for an opening statement, one and a half minutes to respond to questions from the panel, and two minutes for closing statements. Candidates will be given a 30 second warning and then a signal to stop. And Kathy Casanave, our timekeeper, will display the warning and stop signs. The forum is expected to last 30 minutes. The candidates for this office are Kathy Miller, wave your hand, Kathy, everybody can see you, and Carlos Villapudua. We will now get started with the opening statements in the order that the candidates will appear on the ballot. And the first candidate will be Kathy Miller. Thank you. Um, first off, uh, welcome everybody. And I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters uh, for putting this virtual candidate forum together. Um, it's so important, especially in these uh, times of isolation and social distancing for the voters to be able to see and hear from the candidates directly on the issues that matter. Uh, I am a wife of 43 years, a mother of three grown children and a very proud grandmother of five. I've spent the last 15 years in public service, first as the executive director representing small businesses on the downtown Stockton Alliance, and then six years on the Stockton City Council, and I am in my sixth year on the Board of Supervisors, serving again this year as the chair. My husband and I were both raised in blue collar families, and we understand the value of hard work. And that's why I have focused so much of my energy as an elected official to creating and expanding opportunities for the working families of San Joaquin. I also understand how transformational education can be because I have experienced it in my own family. Um, education opened doors for my husband and I and for our children. And that's why I'm committed to making sure that the next public university built in this state is built right here in Stockton. Thank you. Thank you. And now our next candidate, opening statement is Carlos Villapudua. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank the League of Women Voters uh, for hosting this event today. It's been my lifelong dream to serve my community the, in where I was born in, uh, where I went to school in, and where I'm raising my family in. I've had the experience to work governmental, uh, looking at a hospital that was losing millions and millions of dollars and turning that around, um, working on a, you know, a, 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 an airline where an airport where we brought in many uh, airlines here to get folks to other destinations around the country. Uh, and also, which I'm very proud of is our wine ordinance. And that was really to have a domino effect of, uh, of, of folks coming to our community to heat, eat at our restaurants, uh, you know, gas, their, gas up their cars here in our community even move here, uh, which, which had a domino effect of creating many, many, as many jobs. I've also had the experience of, you know, being in the private sector, uh, being an owner to know what it takes to make payroll, to, to uh, also pay workman's comp. Um, I've had that experience and this is the kind of experience that you need now going into Sacramento. Folks that that understand the business aspect. And during these times, you're going to need that going into Sacramento. Stop, we please. To make sure we turn back our copy. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would like to now introduce our panelists for this evening, Rhonda Sanders from the League of Women Voters. Rhonda, raise your hand. And Penny yeah. McConnell from the Faith in the Valley. And Penny. In order to ease the flow of questions and answers tonight, each panelist will ask her three questions in sequence, then the other panel will ask her three questions. 
Please wait for the moderator to direct each question to the candidate and then we'll re rotate responses so that each candidate has opportunity to answer the first, for, be the first responder to some questions. So we will begin with questions from Penny McConnell, panelist from Faith in the Valley. And the first to answer the first question is Mr. Via Pudua. So Penny. thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My first question is surrounding health care. We believe that everyone has a right to full health care, regardless of their insurance or immigration status. Mm -hmm. So nobody should go through this crisis without health coverage. Could you share with us your thoughts? for extending health insurance coverage for the following, coronavirus related treatment to all Californians, regardless of immigration or insurance status and or families or individuals who have lost insurance due to COVID-19 related circumstances. Mr. Pudua. Thank you. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big supporter of healthcare. I mean, I've been a fighter for our hospital, uh, like I said earlier, when we were uh, losing tens of millions of dollars every year. I fought hard to make sure that we kept our hospital open. Um, you know, a lot of people are, are wanting to make a choice. And uh, we're talking, you know, 20 million plus folks here in, in our state. Uh, I'm a big supporter of that, but I'm also support of a supporter of making sure that everyone has health care. And, and what we need to do is make sure that everyone has an opportunity to make a choice. I, I was, I, years back, I was one that worked on the Healthy Families Program. I was a director for that, where we were out helping folks get insurance and making sure that they were, and it was, it was, it was very, at a very, very low cost. But the most important thing is because people were keeping and paying, keeping their doctor's appointments. And that's what, what lowered the cost in an ER. And we need to get back to bringing programs like the Healthy Families Program here into the state, in, into our state of California and back to our community. Do I keep going to the second question? No, or, yeah. no, yeah. When you're finished with the first question, then we'll go to Ms. Miller. Okay, okay. Ms. Miller. Thank you. Um, Healthcare, I, I absolutely believe that uh, healthcare is, is a right and that we should be working um, very hard to expand not only access to healthcare, but its affordability. Um, the Affordable Care Act added approximately 77,000 newly insured individuals just in our county. And these are folks who many of them had never ever received any preventive care of any kind. And they also, for children especially, had not received any dental care. And uh, dental issues are the number one reason for kids not being in school. So there is a, a very large economic impact in, in our county to our schools, and to our uh, parents who have to then take off work when their kids are sick and they aren't getting routine preventive care. So we need to um, expand access. And the fastest and easiest way to do that is by continuing to expand Medi-Cal in this state. It provides uh, more access to more people who currently are uninsured. And if COVID has shown us anything, it is how critically important access to quality health care is. And your health should not be determined by your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy and uh, Carlos. So our second question from Penny McConnell from Faith in the Valley. Penny? This is regarding housing. We estimate that at least 22,750 San Joaquin County households, including 23,890 children are in danger of facing eviction due to relying on income from industries that have been impacted by COVID-19. Due to the startling number of anticipated evictions we will be facing throughout San Joaquin County, what is your plan to support and or put policy into place to protect these vulnerable tenants from homelessness. And Kathy Miller will answer first. Thank you. Um, I think it's important to remember that 
When you only focus okay. on the tenants, you're focusing all the way downstream in this system. If, if all we do is eliminate evictions, we have many landlords who only own one or two rental properties who are going to lose their property to foreclosure because they are not going to be able to make their mortgage payments. You also have a, a lot of local small lenders, including some of our uh, credit unions, who are going to be hurt terribly um, by not having um, mortgage payments made. And so we have to look at it as a full system. Um, the county's role in this is uh, very strong in uh, preventing people from losing their housing by providing programs that provide rental assistance, uh, rapid rehousing, <clears throat> and we are utilizing um, a lot of our uh, outside funding to bring to bear on this. We also help coordinate these efforts through our leadership role uh, in uh, the continuum of care and working closely with our cities to provide that sort of rental assistance. Thank you. And Mr. Villapudua. Thank you. Um, one of the biggest problems that we're having here in Stockton and e even in this whole district is that we don't have enough inventory. We don't have enough inventory for our seniors, for senior housing and for those who just can't afford it. We need to look at more in, you know, uh, <coughs> infield development, uh, work with our developers, but literally work with our city council. Um, those, the local, local folks that are, are, passing uh, laws here, we need to make sure that we have affordable housing. We're growing here dramatically. We're getting, you know, influence from the Bay Area, from all, all sorts. And I, and I hear time to time people that want to move out of here. But here's the thing. You need someone in Sacramento that is also going to fight for, for everyone to make sure that our seniors are important or the folks that don't, cannot afford it that we're making the laws and bringing them here and working with our local local or our officials and our developers here. Because if we don't work and, and create more infield development and housing for them, we're, we're gonna continue to grow and have the Bay Area come here and, and make these changes that's gonna drive up the prices here in our community. And I'm, I'm gonna make sure that we're gonna fight and work hard with our local officials here. Thank you. Now we'll go to Penny's third question. My last question is surrounding education. Historically, the general fund is the first to be cut with education and social services as primary targets, while state prison budgets are safeguarded or even bolstered, contributing to the school to prison pipeline. What can you do to advocate for the protection of educational funding and a more equitable funding distribution to the social and mental health needs for communities of color? And Mr. Villapudua, you're the first responder. Thank you very much. Um, I like just to start off that you know it's 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 great that uh, early on in my campaign that I was endorsed by uh, the California Teachers Association, and it, and it's, this is because it's dear to my heart. You know, I have two daughters that are in, are in college, but I also have a daughter that that did not want to go to college. You know, and I we have to we have to make that as a plan A. Also, you know, college or vocational, we need to bring back a vocational into our schools so that people can go back out and know a trade. There's nothing wrong with either driving a truck. If you, if you look at San Joaquin County, we're a, the <laughs> hub of, of transportation. We do not have enough drivers. In fact, we're, we're going into a humongous problem where a lot of them are going, going to retire. There's, trades are the most important. Vocational is the most important. We need to make sure that people, even people that are getting out of prison, folks that are in jail, incarcerated, that we're working with them, simple thing of getting their driver's license. Because when they go back out, they can't even get a job. They can't even apply for some of these vocational jobs. And I plan to work with our sheriff's department to make sure that the simplest things are very important to, to drive our economy. So vocational, vocational is going to be one of the key factors of why I'm running for the seat is that we need to change our economy. We need to change our community. We need to change folks that are out there who stop. are homeless, but we need to make sure that they have a job. Please stop. Thank you. 
Thank you. And now Ms. Miller. Thank you. Um, I agree that um, the, the priorities that are set at the state level um, are critically important and they ripple down. Uh, I've been working for the last seven years with the San Joaquin Children's Alliance to, uh, to really focus on helping to develop a new and sustainable funding stream to backfill the tobacco tax dollars, which are going away. Um, I understand that early childhood education especially is critically important. And that is something that I will absolutely support at the state level. Um, all of our children should begin kindergarten ready to learn. Um, I agree with the criminal justice reforms that have been enacted in Sacramento to redirect um, our, our priorities to education and keeping our young people away from the criminal justice system instead of trying to um, fund this black hole uh, that this prison system has become. Um, I believe, I, I and I support um, the closure of the youth uh, facilities so that we keep our kids local and we work with them through probation and we make sure that we get them back on track instead of throwing them away into the prison system. So that will be a big priority for me in Sacramento to make sure that uh, K through 12, preschool and uh, community colleges are adequately funded. Thank you. And now we'll move to uh, Rhonda Sanders from the League of Women Voters for her three questions. So Rhonda, would you like to ask the first one, please? Okay. Our first question is, millions of Californians have lost their jobs or businesses during the pandemic and unemployment in the Central Valley is still in double digits. What can the state do to help those who have lost their livelihood? And Kathy Miller, you'll be the first response. Thank you. Um, well, there are a lot of things the state can do. The first thing they ought to do is fix the EDD at the state level. There's people that are literally have been waiting months for their unemployment benefits. And that is a disgrace. That needs to be fixed immediately. And I believe there, uh, there is an audit uh, that will be put into place and it is needed. Um, but there are a lot of other things the state can do. Um, the main thing is um, the state needs to prioritize its investments in spending. Um, I believe my experience on the Stockton City Council through the bankruptcy will be um, uh, really serve me well in Sacramento. It's important that you understand you cannot just focus on uh, reducing expenses. You do have to uh, uh, look at uh, investing. And so it's important that you don't just look at the crisis right in front of you, but you also look at what kind of investments will position us <laughs> for recovery. So things like infrastructure are very important. Uh, investing in a job program. Those are very critically important. And I'm very proud of the fact that less than three years after Stockton uh, emerged from bankruptcy, we were ranked one of the most fiscally healthy cities in the United States. That's because of making smart decisions, hard decisions, but smart decisions that will that position Stockton for recovery. Thank you. Mr. Villapurua. Can you repeat the question one more time? Mm -hmm. Millions of Californians have lost their jobs or businesses during the pandemic and unemployment in the Central Valley is still in double digits. What can the state do to help those who have lost their livelihoods? Yeah, I think we, we got to first uh, change our government a way of thinking. You know, I think a lot of the information that was given out there uh, to just just folks that are trying to figure out how to how to apply for unemployment or businesses to how to apply for PPEs, um, it just wasn't given right. I mean, people were still trying to figure out this puzzle and go through the through the website that no one re was really helping them. During these times, it's new times. These are times that we are all learning, but we also have to hold folks' hands and help them through. And that's what you need is that. You know, I'm one of those folks that is, it's, it's about common sense. It's about public trust that you need to have people understand. We need to bring back jobs. And that's why I'm strong when it comes to vocational training. We need to do that now. It's important to add that in our schools. Give, give folks the opportunity that, that, to, to learn a new trade. 
because our economy is going to change, but we also have to have help for them. We really got to have trust in them and believe in them. And that's what you're going to get in Sacramento is folks that like myself that understand business. We need to try to safely bring back and open our economy and bring back our business and support them because they are the folks that are paying for our streets, for our roads, for, for our law enforcement, uh, for our social workers that are out there, our nurses, that, that we need to make sure that we're supporting this. Thank you. And now we'll move to the second question from uh, Rhonda Sanders. Okay. What do you see as the most pressing issue facing District 13? And can you give an example of a solution? And Mr. Diapurwa. Thank you. Um, Lodi, Tracy are two different cities. Mountain House and Stockton are, are really different than each other. But we've always kind of cookie cut this whole county as one. You can't do that, not during these times. And not now, not now, not ever. You have to divide each one and figure out what are their priorities. I look at homeless as a number one issue here. Okay, that's, 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 but that's not an issue in, in Mountain House. But I can tell you right now, and it's, which is dear to my heart, no 30 days, no 60 days programs work. I've taken visits to San Francisco, Delancey Street, programs that literally change. You don't need folks telling you that you have a drug problem. You already know that. You need folks that are gonna believe in you, trust in you, teach you a new trade, teach you a vocational, so that when you're back out there, this is a, not a revolving door, you're back out there, you have three different trades. So you have no excuses to fail again. We need to make sure that we're back creating programs like that here in San Joaquin County. If it's either built in relationship with Delancey Street or bringing those types of programs here, we have a lot of nonprofits that, that, that are trying to, to do their best, but we need to make sure that we're giving them all the tools, all the funding, so that we can get folks back on their feet, back into the workforce or learning new programs. So that's our number one issue here is, is just homeless. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kathy Miller. Uh, I believe that uh, one of the most pressing issues in San Joaquin County and, and if properly addressed would have, would have the greatest impact on our future is uh, increasing educational opportunities for students of all ages and improving the outcomes of our students. Um, we, we lag behind in San Joaquin County in terms of uh, the children that are able to read at grade level at third grade. Uh, we lag behind when we uh, see that we still have high numbers of students not finishing high school. We lag behind when we see that we have a lower proportion of high school graduates going on directly to a four-year school. Those are all things that hurt us, not only today, but they hurt our future and they contribute to the brain drain that San, San Joaquin has experienced for many years where our best and our brightest young people leave our county for higher education and they don't return. And I believe it can be addressed in several ways. One is by investing in early childhood education. Number two is by um, providing strong programs to guide our students while they are still in the school. And number three, we need to bring a CSU campus here. It will absolutely be a game changer for this region. Uh, vocational training is great, but the reality is 21st century jobs at a higher and higher require a higher degree. Thank you. Thank you. And now the third question from Rhonda. Okay, and finally, what makes you the best person for this office? What personal characteristics will help you succeed in office? And Kathy Miller will be the first response. Thank you. Um, I am by far the most experienced candidate in this race. I have uh, served in uh, local government uh, at both the city and the county level. Prior to that, I worked for a nonprofit for almost five years representing property and business owners. So I have been on the other side of government advocating. Uh, and before that, I owned and operated my own small business for well over a decade. Um, I think 
that my reputation as a hard worker uh, is something else that will serve me well in Sacramento. Uh, it's a new challenge. And I am a person that uh, rolls up my sleeves and I really dig in on issues. And I make sure that when I cast a vote, it is uh, an informed vote that has been informed on all sides of the issue and that it is my own position that has been developed. And I, I believe that that is something uh, that is really important to uh, the residents of San Joaquin County. We have an opportunity right now. We have a seat at the table and people are paying attention to San Joaquin County. We need to send our most effective representative to Sacramento. And I believe that I'm that person. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Villapurua. Thank you. Um, I will never say I'm the best public speaker at all. I mean, but what you're going to see is this, and I know my opponent will say experience matters. It does. If you have accomplished, you need to look at accomplishments. Look at what we've done during the most difficult times in 2008 when we came in. A hospital was failing. There were, there were jobs being cut. We've, we turned that around. We added a wide ordinance that created so many jobs that people here not just want to want to travel for tourism, but they want to move here. They want to live here. We've created so many jobs. And I, I think that you have to look at during these most difficult times is that you want someone that, that wants to bring our economy back, someone that's going to roll up their sleeves, someone that's going to get along with all sides and, and, and bring common sense, someone that's going to put San Joaquin County on the map. We've never seemed to be moving forward. It just seems to be an economy that a, a, a community that people just look at as just a, a farming community, which I'm proud of, which I've been endorsed by the ag community. But let me tell you, we need to bring jobs here. And you're and, and a, a person that was a director for welfare to work. I know the experience of putting back people. I know the hard work and you're going to get the person that's going to roll up their sleeves and making sure that we bring other folks from other parts of this state to understand why San Joaquin County. Thank you. And now we're going to move to closing statements. Each candidate will have two minutes. And Mr. Villapuro, you're up first. Thank you. Well, you know, my campaign has always been thinking positive and, and, and letting people know who I am. I've, I showed that during, um, in the primary, how hard I've worked you know, to not just to win this election, but to reach out and talk to folks. During COVID, we were out helping our community build food boxes. I was out there four, four to five days a week to make sure that this community was important. They know how hard I, I've been working. And being, being and supporting our... Uh, you're muted, Mr. Viapudua. Somehow he got muted. Can you hear him? No, I can't. Um, put up the We're stop talking. sign. Oh, yeah. you got muted. I'm sorry. Okay. Did I get cut off? Yeah, you got muted. Yeah, so we can, can start I, over again. Can let me yeah, let me just change this, and we can start over again because you've been muted most of the time. Yeah. Okay. We'll okay. Go ahead. Beginning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to say that. I've been very positive in our campaign, never going negative. This has been in, important, sticking to the issues here. This is the most important thing that people want to hear. As hard as I've been working during the primary that we won, that's not, that's not important now. I, we have been working hard during COVID to feed our community, built food boxes four days a week to feed our community. Um, now, it, now people see how hard we have been working as an ends how hard that we've been working is exactly what i'm going to do for this district ad 13 is to work so hard for our, our community to make sure that sacramento knows that this district is important for our economy it's important for for our future for our kids uh for the ag community for our educational community for folks that are trying to learn a new trade or either go to college 
this is important for our community and I'm going to be a fighter to, for, to represent and to, and to bring people here to understand why are we, why are we fighting? Why are we fighting to make this community better? So I want to thank everyone for giving me the time. My name is Carlos Villapudua and I'm running for State Assembly, District 13. Thank you. And now uh, Ms. Miller. You're muted. You're muted. I'm still here. That's the, that's the line for 2020, you're muted. <laughs> uh, thank you once again to the League uh, and Faith in the Valley for putting together this forum. Um, once again, I do believe experience counts. Uh, I have served on almost every single agency in our region uh, and have led the fight to protect our Delta and our water supply for over a decade. I've also been chair this year of the San Joaquin County Board of Supervisors and the county has led the COVID response uh, in our region uh, during these really tough times. Um, I have a proven track record of results. Um, and I also believe that leadership matters. Um, leadership is about uh, more than uh, public speaking. Uh, it's about uh, maintaining the highest standards of ethics and uh, working to advance the ideals of transparency and accountability in government. When the city of Stockton's finances melted down, I stepped up, I assumed a leadership role to help balance the budget and to get our city back on track. And I'm very proud that today, Stockton is one of the most fiscally healthy cities in our nation. I wanna take all of this experience that I've gained over the last 20 years and I wanna take it to Sacramento and provide strong, effective ad advocacy for the people of San Joaquin County. This is personal for me. I grew up in California. My family is in California. Four generations of my family are currently in California. And my goal is to make sure that the California dream that is inherited by my children and my grandchildren and your grandchildren and all of the children in our county is strong and full of promise. So thank you again. Um, I appreciate the time tonight and I appreciate everybody who uh, stops in to watch this video. Thank you. thank you. That does conclude our forum for tonight. And I would like to thank both candidates very much. We know you are very busy schedules, both of you, and we appreciate the time you've spent with us. Also want to thank our two panelists, Penny McConnell from Faith in the Valley and Rhonda Sanders from the League of Women Voters, and also Kathy Casanave, our timekeeper, and Jerry Bigby and Reverend Bob from, um, Jerry from the League and Reverend Bob from the Univer Unitarian Church for all the technology expertise. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to also announce that the uh, Senate District 5 forum that was scheduled for 7.30 tonight has been canceled. And just a reminder for everybody that if you've not registered to vote, you still can until October 19th, this is the last day. You can register online at the San Joaquin County Registrar of Voters. And also on their website is a list of the 34 voter service locations, which will be open October 31st through November 3rd for in-person voting. And a list of 25 mail-in ballot drop box locations in San Joaquin County, or you can mail in your ballot through the post office. I also would like you to know that the league has a website, votersedge.org. Both of our candidates tonight have posted their candidate information. It has information on a variety of candidates that will be on your ballot and also the 12 state propositions and any local propositions in the county. So uh, check it out, votersedge.org and be an informed voter. And we thank you very much, all of you tonight. And remember your vote matters. Good night.